All right, we're talking about closely held businesses. We've talked about the closely held corporation. Now let's talk about the closely held partnership. Most general partnerships are closely held. Uh, there might be some limited liability partnerships or some limited partnerships that are not closely held. But as a general matter, we'll look at partnerships as being virtually all general, uh, excuse me, all closely held. Same two issues that we've dealt with before, fiduciary duties in the closely held partnership and the transfer of partnership interest. First, quickly, let's talk about fiduciary duties in the partnership. We already talked about this in chapter six. Uh, we talked about the fiduciary duties of uh, shareholders in closely held corporations. The same principles apply here. Scope of fiduciary duties, we have the same traditional fiduciary duties of care, loyalty, good faith, the duty not to commit waste, the duty to monitor, those sorts of things. Plus, there's a duty of good faith and fair dealing, the duty of good faith and fair dealing from one partner to another partner. Uh, the general idea of the fiduciary duty of good faith, excuse me, the duty of good faith and fair dealing. Remember, it might not be a fiduciary duty. It might be a fiduciary duty. In any case, we'll just call it the duty of good faith and fair dealing. You can exercise your discretion to further your own self-interest, but you must do it in good faith. Let's talk about the transfer of partnership interest. Uh, once again, let's look at the background, the legal framework that governs the transfer of ownership interests in closely held businesses. So in a partnership, uh, ownership interests, partnership interests are not freely transferable. If I am a partner and I want to transfer my partnership interest to a third party, I must get the consent of all of my other partners. Um, and if I'm a partner, I can demand a buyout at any time and get fair market value. So my, if I'm a partner and I want out of this partnership, I want to exit my investment, all I have to do is demand it. And the partnership and the other partners must now buy me out at fair market value. We might want to change that in the partnership agreement. In an LLC, your ownership interests are not freely transferable. If I'm a member in an LLC and I want to transfer my membership interest to a third party, I need to get the consent of all my other members, all my co-members. Um, in a, an LLC, at least under the Uniform Limited Liability Company Act, um, a member may not demand to be bought out. If we want a buyout right, we have to put that in our operating agreement, which is effectively the buy-sell agreement or can have a buy-sell agreement for the LLC. Um, in a corporation, as we discussed, in a corporation, the default rules are that your ownership interest, your shares are indeed freely transferable. You don't need the consent of the other shareholders to transfer your shares to a third party. Um, and I may not, if I'm a shareholder in a corporation, I have no right to demand a buyout of my shares from the corporation or the other, excuse me, demand buyout of my shares by the corporation or the other shareholders. If I want that right, I have to negotiate that in a buy-sell agreement. All right, so once again, in this section, we're talking about the partnership and the legal framework is that uh, my ownership interests are not freely transferable and that I can demand a buyout at any time at fair market value. Let's talk about those in a little bit more detail. All right, so if we have a partnership and we have a partnership agreement, we would address the same issues, the same events that we would address if we were drafting a buy-sell agreement for a corporation. Now, because the law is different, however, our starting point is different. So for the partnership, we start out with the idea that my control rights of a corporate, excuse me, my control rights, my partnership interests are not freely transferable, but my economic rights are. Now, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in the next slide, but for right now, just remember that 
even though we said my partnership interests are not freely transferable, what that really means is that my control rights as a partner are not freely transferable, but my economic rights are. So when we are drafting our buy-sell agreement in our partnership agreement, our buy-sell provision in our partnership agreement, we're gonna keep in mind that our starting point is that there's no free transfer of partnership interest to a third party. Um, a partner can dissociate at any time and demand to be bought out. We talked about this. If I'm a partner and I want out, all I have to do is say, I want out, I demand you buy me out at fair market value. So when we're drafting our buy-sell agreement, we wanna keep in mind that that is the default rule. We can change that default rule and we might wanna change it in our buy-sell agreement. Um, and then there are other default dissociation rules. So for example, if I become bankrupt under the Revised Uniform Partnership Act, I dissociate. I am dissociated from the partnership. I am no longer a partner in the partnership. That's the default rule. We might wanna keep that same default rule in our buy-sell agreement, or we might want to change it. All right, let's talk about control rights and economic rights of partners. We said this, we said that your partnership interests are not freely transferable. If I'm a partner and I wanna transfer my interest to a third party, I have to get the permission of all of my other partners. That is the default rule, but it's not quite accurate. To understand why it's not quite accurate, we have to divide our partnership interests into two separate rights. There are the control rights and the economic rights. And the real rule, the real default rule is that the control rights are not freely transferable. What are control rights? Well, my control rights are effectively my, my rights to act as a partner, my right to uh, manage the business and affairs of the partnership, my voting rights, my right to bind the partnership, my authority to bind the partnership. Those are uh, what we would call my control rights. Those rights are not freely transferable. My economic rights, however, are freely transferable. The question is, does anyone want them? But uh, they are freely transferable. They are my rights to the residual, my rights to the profits and to uh, any liquidation if we dissolve the partnership. So if I transfer my partnership interests, what does that mean? Am I transferring my control rights or my economic rights? Well, if I don't have the permission of the other partners, then I'm only transferring my economic rights, which means the transferee, the third party purchaser, doesn't get to become a partner and have the control in the partnership. They only get the economic rights, the right to receive a profit and the rights to a liquidation. Now, the third party might say, listen, I have those economic rights, but I need the control rights to protect myself. And so they might not want to purchase just the economic rights, all right? So if I'm a partner and I wanna transfer my partnership rights to a third party without the consent of the other partners, I can do so under the default rules, but I can only transfer my economic interests. That third party will not become a partner. For that third party to become a partner, I need the consent of all my other partners. We might want to address this in the partnership agreement. All right, let's talk about dissociation at will. It's not disassociation, it's dissociation. Sometimes I make that mistake, you'll make it too. It's okay, just correct yourself. Dissociation. Dissociation at will is just where you say, I no longer want to have anything to do with this partnership. I demand out. I want out. And that's all dissociation is. You no longer are a partner. Uh, dissociation at will is the idea is that I can dissociate at any time and I can demand to be bought out. These are the default rules. Now you can understand why we might not want this default rule. We might not want any partner to say, I demand to be bought out and I wanna be bought out right now at fair market value. It's a dangerous right to have. And so we might take away this right in the partnership agreement or we might leave it. Uh, sometimes this is called dissociation at will. Sometimes it's called withdrawal at will. I am just getting out of the partnership just because I said so. All I have to do is say, I want out 
and I have dissociated myself from the partnership. I am no longer a partner, and once I've dissociated myself like this, the partnership and the other partners have a uh, obligation to buy me out at fair market value. Okay, at what price? Once again, fair market value. We might want to change this in the partnership agreement. Uh, there are other reasons for dissociation or other causes of dissociation of a partner. Remember, dissociation just means you are no longer a partner. The first one we talked about was dissociation at will. And all you have to do is say, I am no longer a partner, I want out, and now you are no longer a partner. There are other default rules, other events that will cause disassociation, and we might want to address these in the partnership agreement. Under the revised Uniform Partnership Act, these are some of the events that will cause dissociation. So if a partner dies, a partner is no longer a partner. If a partner becomes disabled so that they can no longer uh, 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 act as a partner, then they uh, are dissociated. If a partner becomes bankrupt, the partner is disassociated. If a partner withdraws, we already talked about this, withdraw at will, a partnership, excuse me, a partner is disassociated from the partnership. And finally, if the other parties expel the partner, and there are only, uh, there are limited uh, circumstances where you can expel a partner, um, but if the partner is expelled, then the partner is dissociated.